Hey guys, good evening and welcome back again to your Run Academy Neat English channel. I hope all of you are doing amazing, all of you are doing great. So, well, in this particular session, I am going to give you some of the short, short questions of physics, not chemistry, right? So, my dear students, some of the questions I have come up with, right? They have been asked in the J mains examinations, but they are the short, short, neat oriented questions. And I believe the questions which I have chosen, you might do a mistake while solving these questions. For example, one very simple and basic question from the chapter of vectors, right? Have a look at the question and you have to select the most appropriate answer over here. The question says, if A cross B is equal to B cross A, what is the angle between A and B? I know majority of the students in this particular question will either say zero or pi, but I'm telling you to select the most appropriate answer, right? Now, how exactly you guys are going to do it? See guys, see, understand. A cross B is equal to B cross A. Can I write it like this? A cross B I'm writing as such. A cross B I'm writing as such, right? And this B cross A, this B cross A, I'm writing it as minus A cross B. I can do that. Perfect, right? If I get this minus a cross b on left side, it's going to be a cross b plus a cross b, which makes it two times a cross b. Which makes it two times a cross b. This has to be zero, right? So it's done almost. So it's going to be two times a cross b is nothing but a b sine theta. So two times a b sine theta has to be zero. This is telling you that sine theta has to be zero. Now you tell me, when is sine theta zero? sin theta is 0 when theta is equal to n pi, right? I mean, theta can be 0, theta can be pi, 2 pi, 3 pi. In general, I'm going to write n pi. So, I had told you to select the most appropriate answer. So, most appropriate answer of this particular question is going to be n pi. I hope I'm clear with this particular one, okay? Now, moving on to the second question. This sort of a question you would have seen in different books, H.C. Verma, I. Erodo, I believe you would have solved, right? D.C. Pandey also contains this particular question. Three particles are placed at the vertices of the equilateral triangle. Three particles A, B, C. Three particles A, B, C, they are placed at the vertices of the equilateral triangle, okay? The length of the, the one of the side of the equilateral triangle is equal to A, perfect. All these three particles, they started moving towards each other simultaneously. Right? So simultaneously, all these three particles started moving towards each other with the same speed u. First of all, the question is asked, will these particles meet? Absolutely, these particles are going to meet at the center. Right? These particles are going to meet at the center. Perfect. Now the question is asked, time taken by the particles to meet. Right? At what time these particles will meet at the center? Right? This T we are supposed to calculate. How you guys are going to do it? There are many ways of solving this question. Perfect. But I'm giving you a general result with the help of which you can solve these sort of questions. For example, you've got four particles are placed at the vertices of the square. Right? All the four particles started moving towards each other with the same speed u. They will meet at the center. Now, what is going to be the time taken for them to meet? So, one general expression I'm giving you, which you are going to remember from now onwards, P is equal to A divided by u multiplied by 1 minus cos 360 divided by n, right? Cos 360 divided by n. This is one general result, my dear students, which I would want every one of you to remember, okay? A, you know, it is this distance. U is the speed with which the particles are moving. N represents the number of sides of the polygon, right? Number of sides of the polygon. Over here, n value is equal. There are three sides of this triangle. N value is 3. So if I solve the first question, P is going to be equal to A divided by U multiplied by 1 minus cos of 360 divided by 3. Because there are three sides in this triangle. So this is cos of 120. So I'm writing cos of 120 as such. Okay. So now it is a matter of calculation. We are done. So A divided by U multiplied by 1 minus cos 120 is minus 1 by 2. So 1 plus 1 by 2 makes it 3 by 2. Right. So it's A divided by U multiplied by 3 divided by 2. The final answer is going to be 2a divided by 3u. This is the answer of this question. Similarly, if you look at this particular question, there are four sides, right? Put n is equal to 4 here. Put n is equal to 4 here, it becomes cos 90. 
it becomes cos 90, cos 90 is 0, right? So T value in this question simply comes out to be A divided by U. Perfect. What is this N over here? N represents the number of sides of the polygon. Perfect. So if N is equal to 4 in the last case, so 360 divided by 4 is 90, cos of 90 is 0, right? That means the final answer T comes out to be A divided by U. Now there can be questions wherein you will be given with the values of A as well as U. You just have to put the value of A and U and get the final answer. Similarly, you just have to get put the value of A and U in the question. If it is given to you, you're done. Perfect. So I'm giving you one homework question for this one. Let's say you have got a polygon. I mean, you have got this pentagon. Perfect. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. I'm telling you, there are five particles placed at the vertices of this pentagon. All the five particles started moving towards each other. At what time they are going to meet? This is the question which I'm giving to you. Perfect. Uh, let this length be A. And the speed with which the particles have started moving towards each other, let that speed be U. Let that speed be U. Do let me know the answer of this particular question in the comment section of this particular video. There is one more famous question from the chapter Electrostatics, right? The question is like this. If you have got a cube, let's say you have got a cube. Let me make the cube over here. Let me make one cube over here. Imagine this one cube. Perfect. How many sides this cube has? This cube has in total six faces. Now, if a charge Q is placed at the vertex of this cube, if the charge Q is placed here, this is the charge Q placed. I'm asking you, what will be the flux leaving this particular surface? What will be the electric flux which will be passing through this particular surface? This is the question. How exactly you are going to solve this sort of a question? My dear students, your priority over here should be to get this particular charge at the center of the cube. Now, how exactly you are going to get this charge at the center of the cube? So, my dear students, what you should, should be doing, you will be making eight cubes over here. You'll be making eight cubes over here. Perfect, you'll be making eight cubes over here. Four in the ground floor and similarly four in the first floor. Right, you can make eight cubes over here. Perfect. You just need to make eight cubes over here. When you put eight cubes, I believe you will study solid state. Perfect. In the solid state, I hope you know how this charge, which was placed at the corner of the cube, how this can be placed at the center by making eight cubes, four in one floor, four in the ground floor and four in the first floor. Perfect. Right. Now, the question is asked, what will be the flux leaving this particular surface? What will be the flux leaving this particular surface? So if I complete this diagram, if I complete this diagram, let me just complete it for you so that you understand. Let me just complete it for you so that you understand. Perfect. So basically, when I place eight cubes, when I place eight cubes, in total, the bigger sized cube which I get, the bigger sized cube which I get, on, on keeping eight cubes over here, such that the, this charge comes at the center, the bigger cube which I get, that bigger cube will be having how many sides? That bigger cube will be having six sides in total. Out of which this is this is, this is, out of which, this is one of the side of that bigger cube. This is one of the side of that bigger cube, right? Through this whole surface, through this whole surface, how much flux will be leaving? Q upon 6 epsilon naught, right? This is the flux leaving this complete surface, this complete surface. Now, this complete surface is made up of four small surfaces, out of which this is one surface, this is one more surface, this is one more side, this is one more side. So this bigger surface is made up of four surfaces, right? This is the flux leaving one, leaving through the bigger surface. Or I can say, this is the electric flux leaving through these four small surfaces, right? Four small surfaces. So from four small surfaces, what is the flux leaving? Q upon six epsilon naught. So from one small surface, what will be the electric flux passing? It's going to be Q upon six epsilon naught divided by four. So Q upon 24 epsilon naught. This is going to be the electric flux leaving this particular small surface over here, right? This is something which was asked in this particular question. And these sort of questions are asked. Now you tell me one thing. I'm asking you a question. If a placed, I mean, if a charge is placed at the edge center of the cube, if the charge is placed at the edge center of the cube, what will be the electric flux leaving the opposite surface? Okay, just let me know the answer of this particular question in the comment section of this particular video, right? Take care, I'll come up with more such kind of the sessions. For that, do like the session, share this particular video with everyone. 
and let's kill it. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.